Arcadian Vanguard presents the Wrestling News in your daily wrestling newscast for Sunday, August 6, 2023. Good morning, I'm Mike Sempervivi. We begin today with the 36th annual edition of SummerSlam streamed live last night on Peacock and the WWE Network from Ford Field in Detroit. Roman Reigns pinned Jey Uso in the Tribal Combat main event in 36 minutes and 4 seconds to retain the WWE Universal Championship and his position as Tribal Chief. The finish occurred following outside interference from a disguised Jimmy Uso who prevented Jey from securing a pinfall on Reigns. Uso splash! The raid is over! Who the hell? What the hell? Are you freaking kidding me? Jimmy, what the hell did you do? The champion then speared Jay through a table and got the pin. The win marked Reigns' 52nd successful defense since first winning the title nearly three years ago. It marks Reigns' third straight successful SummerSlam defense, following wins over Brock Lesnar in 2022 and John Cena in 2021. World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins retained his title as well, pinning Finn Balor in 18 minutes and 27 seconds in their second consecutive premium live event match, following last month's Money in the Bank. Rollins pinned Balor after curb stomping him on the Money in the Bank briefcase left in the ring by Damian Priest, who appeared to be trying to cash it in. The night's only title change occurred in the WWE Women's Championship match, with Io Sky leaving Ford Field as the new title holder after cashing in her Money in the Bank contract on Bianca Belair, moments after Belair had just won the title from Asuka in a triple threat match which also included Charlotte Flair. The win marks Sky's first main roster championship and makes her the first women to win a championship in both stardom and WWE. Cody Rhodes defeated Brock Lesnar in their rubber match, scoring the pinfall in 17 minutes and 29 seconds following three crossroads finishers. Lesnar embraced Rhodes in a show of respect following the match. And with this victory tonight... Cody Rhodes earned a measure of respect from the greatest combat sports athlete on the planet. And with that nod, and with that handshake, Cody Rhodes, the American Nightmare, has arrived. Intercontinental champion Gunther successfully defended the title against Drew McIntyre, pinning him in 13 minutes and 43 seconds. McIntyre last held the Intercontinental title 13 years ago. The match marked the first time the Intercontinental title has been defended at SummerSlam since 2018, and Gunther is the first champion to retain at SummerSlam since The Miz did so against Apollo Crews in 2016. In other SummerSlam matches, Logan Paul pinned Ricochet in 18 minutes after hitting him with brass knuckles. Shayna Baszler beat Ronda Rousey by referee stoppage in 7 minutes and 26 seconds in an MMA rules match. And LA Knight won a 25-man battle royal in 12 minutes and 46 seconds, last eliminating Sheamus. This was the first SummerSlam event held in the Detroit area since SummerSlam 93 at the Palace at Auburn Hills and the first WWE event presented at Ford Field since WrestleMania 23 in 2007. Also last night, AEW presented Collision live on TNT from the Bon Secours Wellness Arena in Greenville, South Carolina. In the main event, CM Punk defeated Ricky Starks in 22 minutes and 19 seconds in a defense of what Punk refers to as the real AEW world title. Following the loss, Starks attacks special referee Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Ricky Starks going up the ladder. He is a superstar. He is at the top of his game. If he trusted himself, if he found that, that trust to be in the main event on life. Oh, oh, come on. What the hell? Oh, come on. Look at this. Starks mounting Steamboat and hit the veteran in the face. Oh, the, the oh, Hall of Famer's do down. Come on. That's taking it too far. He's looking to embarrass him now, JR. He's looking to make him regret it. Oh, he's the steamboat like an animal. My God, the letter on flesh. All right, all right, enough. It's 
just a stiff little Ricky. Oh, he is Steve McCoy for dear life. And Punk trying to make the save instead. Jim Ross, who has been recovering at home from health issues, returned to call the action for the match, marking his first TV appearance since the first episode of Collision last June. During a promo segment, Ring of Honor World TV champion Samoa Joe issued a challenge to CM Punk for a rematch at All In on August 27th from Wembley Stadium. Also issuing an All In challenge were the AEW World Tag Team champions FTR, whose challenge was directed at the Young Bucks. The challenge was issued following FTR's successful title defense against Big Bill and Brian Cage in the opening match of the show. I think for the better part of a decade, myself and Cash have tried to call ourselves the greatest tag team in the world. And I think we'd go down right now after being 10-time world tag team champions, match of the year, tag team of the year, two out of three falls, 58 minutes, Briscoe's trilogy. I think we can go down as the greatest tag team of all time, but there's one other thing we gotta do. To cement our legacy, there's one other thing we gotta do in three years. Over three years here in AEW, W, there have been two. Only two matches between FTR and Young Bucks. The two greatest tag teams of one generation, and we're one and one. I can't think of a better place to house FTR versus Young Bucks 3, the rubber match, than Wembley Stadium. 80,000 people. 80,000 people. The biggest match of our career. What do you say? Will you be our date? Huh? Top guys, out. The night's two other successful title defenses saw TBS champion Chris Statlander retain against Mercedes Martinez and World Trios champions the House of Black defeat the team of Action Andretti, Darius Martin, and Lee Johnson. Also on the show, Jay White defeated Metallic. In ratings news, overnight numbers are in for last Friday night's SmackDown on Fox with Spoiler TV reporting a total audience figure of 2.151 million down slightly from the previous week's overnight figure of 2.166 million. The overnight rating in the key 18 to 49 year old demographic was 0.57. Full ratings figures for SmackDown are expected later this week. In news from Japan, New Japan Pro Wrestling presented day 13 of the 33rd annual G1 Climax tournament yesterday at the Adion Arena in Osaka, Japan. Four Block A matches were held with Hikaleo defeating Shota Umino, Sonata beating Chase Owens. Ren Narita going over Kaito Kiyomiya, and Yota Suji defeating Gabe Kidd. Sonata and Hikaleo now move on to the quarterfinals. In other non-tournament results, Kazuchika Okada, Tomohiro Ishii, and Hiroshi Tanahashi defeated the Gorillas of Destiny and Hiroyoshi Tenzan. Hinare and Will Ospreay beat El Phantasmo and Togi Makabe. House of Torture beat LIJ. Chaos top David Finley, Gato, and Kenta of Bullet Club and the great Okan and Jeff Cobb went over Doki and Taichi. Day 14 of the G1 Climax is scheduled for today in Osaka. In more WWE news, the company is making changes to its weekly TV commentary teams, according to a story broken yesterday in Variety and later confirmed by WWE. The Raw announced duo of Kevin Patrick and Corey Graves are set to move to SmackDown, although Michael Cole will remain to join them at the three-man desk. Cole will also be calling the action on Raw alongside his previous SmackDown announced partner, Wade Barrett. The changes are scheduled to go into effect with this week's editions of Raw and SmackDown. And Kari Sane has come to an agreement to return to the company, according to a PW Insider report. The specific time and place for her WWE return was not made known, but it's believed to be happening soon. Sane competed in WWE from 2016 to 2021, winning the first Mae Young Classic, the NXT Women's title, and the WWE Women's Tag Team title with Asuka during that time. After leaving WWE, Sane became a regular member of the stardom roster in Japan and was also the inaugural IWGP World Women's Champion. And before we leave you today, we'd like to remind you that however you consume your content, You can find the wrestling news 24 hours a day and seven days a week across social media. On Twitter, follow us at Wrestling News AV. Our Facebook page is also Wrestling News AV. The wrestling news can also be found on the Arcadian Vanguard YouTube page. And for those who utilize Amazon Echo devices, just tell Alexa to play the Wrestling News podcast. And remember to make sure you add podcast at the end. Once again, For daily updates, breaking news, and more, follow the wrestling news across social media. And that's the news for today. If anything happens, we will be here to tell you about it. No clickbait, 
no paywall, just the wrestling news. The wrestling news is a division of Arcadian Vanguard, and the wrestling newscast is a production of the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network.